What's going on people? Let's cook with a little gas. The video I did yesterday have some of you all up in your feelings. That went much better than I thought because I did not get called coon once in the comments. So, but I, I had some of you talking about unsubscribe. He's just doing this for the clicks. He's just, you know, he's talking bad. Why should I get you a free course that's gonna help me put money in my pocket because you're talking bad about black people? Today, I'm about to prove to you what I said in the video was 100% true. Let me introduce you to Louis Farrakhan. You've heard of him. Does Louis Farrakhan subscribe to black culture? No, he doesn't. Every time you see Louis Farrakhan, he's in a suit. The Nation of Islam preaches start a business. They preach marry this woman and raise your children. This Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is the antithesis of black culture. Louis Farrakhan has been able to build a level of wealth by recycling black dollars, by working the gather community. Go ahead, go ahead, call Louis Farrakhan a coon. You wanna know why Louis Farrakhan was able to say the things that he said that pissed off Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity? See, here's the thing that you have to understand. Louis Farrakhan has his own economics. He has his own economic base. He has his own economic support. He has his own power base. That's rooted in the black community. That's working together. That's building black wealth. That's building black power by not subscribing to black culture. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, uh, Louis Minifer, you know, Minister Farrakhan loves black people. He has spoken up for black people, but he does not himself subscribe to black culture. Interesting, isn't it? Go ahead, examine Louis Farrakhan. He's 87 years old, and he has been pissing off white people for decades. He has been talking all kinds of junk because he have his own economics. See, this was the reason that Martin Luther King and Malcolm X were able to say the things they were able to say because they had their own economics. See, it, it, it's just real interesting because see, I, I, I set up some of y'all because I knew that y'all were gonna come at me, but I, I have to admit it wasn't as bad as I thought it was because, you know, Many people brought up stuff that happened in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. Name one government policy that prevents you from succeeding today. Many people who applied for these government, black folks, applied for this PPP, these, uh, these SBA loans, they got them. They got them. I had people in the comments like, oh, I applied and I got the loan, I got the grant. These were black people, huh? Racism supposed to prevent you from getting those loans. Go ahead and name something that has happened in the last 30 years. Let's, let's go 40. That has prevented black people from getting, you know, we're talking about, it, it is true in the 1940s, the GI Bill was not unilaterally applied to black soldiers, 100% true. And they fixed that. It was wrong and they changed that. But name something right now that is preventing you from being successful. Name one government policy, name one roadblock, please do. Cause see, you know, he doing it for the clicks. Let's talk about the clicks. Let's talk about this YouTube channel. I put up a video the other day. I talked about why I'm changing the content of this channel and I'm going in a different direction. When I talk about how to start a business, how to put your LLCs, how to 
start a business, how to do, those videos don't get a lot of views. I put up a video the other day talking about, you know, the birth of a company. That video did not do well. The video did not do well. I want you to think about that. So there are some of you who are in the comments who are like being less than honest. Have you watched all of my how to start a business videos? No, you have not. But I put up a video, five reasons that black people have the money. Oh, you all over that. You all over that. You like, yeah, give me more, give me more. But when I put up these videos instructing people how to start businesses, how to put LLCs, uh, the game, how to, be, how to increase sales, they don't do that well over here. Now they're doing well at Savage Finance. This is where the content's going. Over here, I'm gonna be talking about issues like this. I'm gonna be talking about many, many different things. Cause you know, you know, it, it's, I gotta say that I was pleasantly surprised and happy at 90% of the comments. 90% of the comments went with me because let, let's just keep it the buck. Black culture is corrosive and harmful. Louis Farrakhan, who's blacker than black, he does not embrace nor practice black culture. The Nation of Islam, they don't practice that. Nation of Islam is about working hard, getting married, raising your kids, starting a business, wearing a suit when you come to the, the mosque. What's it get? Like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Call, call Louis Federcon a coon. Go ahead, call him one. He don't embrace it. It's about respectability. It's about treating women with respect. Doesn't practice. Because part of black culture is to treat women with a lot of disrespect. Hence, hip hop music. You cannot say these songs like the thought, that hoe over there. That's part of black culture. Some chick you don't even know, but she's a thought. This is part of black culture. This is the harmful part of black culture. This isn't conducive to building anything. So Louis Farrakhan has been able to build a place in history by speaking strongly, speaking courageously about issues, and he's put himself in the position, because see, once again, Louis Farrakhan is 100% down for black folks. He just doesn't practice black culture, which is why he is successful, why he has a place in society, and he is well received, well renowned. Like, here's one of the reasons. Because see, Louis Farrakhan has something that a lot of black folks don't have. He had power. When Obama was hanging with him, oh man, the white folks got upset. They're like, why he's hanging out with Farrakhan? Didn't want him to hang out with Farrakhan. There, Google it. There's a picture of Louis Farrakhan next to Obama. They're both from Chicago. See, Louis Farrakhan has power. He has economic power, which gives him overall power because he don't practice black culture. I love saying that because, you know, y'all going to go ahead. Look at how Louis Farrakhan lives his life. Look how he has lived his life. Look at how he has put, demonstrated the power of coming together, working together, spending money together. Because, you know, on the Internet, it has his net worth around three million dollars. I think it's greater than that because it's kind of hard to get into the nation of Islam business. But I want you to understand. If you look categorically at the people who have money in the black community, they who are not rappers or athletes. You know, you could be a rapper, you could practice black culture, you could not practice black culture, it don't matter. You could be an athlete, you could be clean cut, it, it don't matter as long as you get the job done on the field. But look at the Robert Smiths, look at the Byron Allens. All these folks who have millions of dollars, they don't practice black culture. 
because black culture would inhibit their ability to become rich. And all of y'all up in the comments whining, I'm unsubscribed, unsubscribe, he's being mean. Let me, let me go ahead and give you some information here. There is nothing that I can say nor do that will be meaner to you than life. I'm just a guy on the internet. There's nothing I could say that's going to be harsher, more unkind to you than life. It's like, oh, you know, it, you know, like I didn't even check the comments to, until this morning. It's like, oh, he's deleting comments. Let, let's go ahead and talk about this. I lease this YouTube channel from YouTube. I get to decide if a comment will be posted because typically I don't delete comments unless you use the N word or you just be particularly insulting. I really don't even, you know, I was like, just ignore it and block you. But why you want to come on my channel, which I lease from YouTube and express your views and try to start a collotation about, well, hey, let's all unsubscribe. Let's go ahead and leave this channel because he's saying things that I don't want to hear. He's saying stuff that I don't want to hear, man. I don't want to hear this. It's, it's the racism. It's the racism from the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s that prevent me from being successful today. Go in here in the comments for all you folks who want to go ahead and look. Because you keep like, let, let's just go ahead and be honest. These racist things happened and they held a group of black folks back. Facts. What is your excuse in 2020? What is your excuse in 1990? What is your excuse in the 1980s? Remember the 80s? Bill Cosby was America's dad. In the 80s, he wasn't just black folks dad. The Cosby Show was one of the most successful television shows in history, which means a whole bunch of white people watching the Cosby's. Wait a minute, hold on. The Cosby Show represented successful black people not practicing black culture. <laughs> what? <laughs> he was a doctor, she was an attorney. They showed their children going to college. Oh my God. Another example of Bill Cosby became extraordinarily wealthy by not practicing black culture. <laughs> oh my God. And he created a show about black people, successful black people who were not practicing black culture. Get out. And he made a whole bunch of money. He inspired a bunch of country. And also, I remember during the Cosby show that many black folks, the folks who practice black culture were saying, no black folks live like that. Now I knew that black folks live like that because half of my family is like the, uh, my, t my kind of people. Lawrence Otis Graham, Google it. He wrote this article talking about how he worked in this country club and how the white people were surprised at his ability to speak and stuff. And he talked about the black upper crust. And there was a comment in there talking about, oh, this is what the middle class black folks see. To borrow from Chris Rock, there is a revolution. I don't believe that another black person should be identified or called an N using the N word. I don't believe in that. I think that there is progressive black people and there are non-progressive black people. And right now we have a culture war between the progressive black people and the non-progressive black folks and the progressive black folks are moving forward, getting the heck out of Dodge, and they're creating legacy and wealth by not practicing black culture. So I gave you Louis Farrakhan, Byron Allen, Bill Cosby, and Bill Cosby used to get a lot of crap because he used to get, he used to get on the comics. Eddie Murphy, and Bill got into it and Eddie Murphy, like Eddie Murphy kind of roasted Bill once, you know, Bill, you know, Bill was 
slipping the pills to these chicks and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And I don't understand what's going on with that. But Bill, you know, he, he was in such a position. He took allowances and it got him in trouble. It finally caught up with him. Just like Epstein, like I said, you know, many people are like, well, Epstein's going to get off. Epstein's not getting off. Epstein's been, Epstein got convicted. So they're not playing around with putting your hands on the women folk. But that's a whole nother video. But in Bill Cosby's prime, he got rich not practicing black culture. And also the 80s was a time when we had in living color, living signal, we had rock, we had a bunch of progressive black shows that showed progressive black folks who were not practicing black culture. Now, let's talk about, because there are some shows that, that are on right now, The Shy, which is on Showtime, which bathes itself in black culture. Hood life and all this other stuff. And it's a gritty, you know, it's kind of like The Wire, which bathed itself in black culture. So you can be successful on television if you show a gritty, um, up close, down and dirty version of black culture. That, that, that also sells. And someone was saying that black culture was created by capitalism. That is incorrect. Black culture created a need which capitalist based people fulfilled. This is one of the rules of success by A.G. Gaston, find a need and fill it. And that's all that happened. You know, there was a need, but the lack of financial literacy, the lack of embracing attributes that are considered white, this is one of the reasons that, you know, black folks don't have money. But like, look at, look at Louis Farrakhan. He got money, he got power, he has respectability. He don't practice black culture. His family don't practice black culture. Go ahead, Colin McCoon. Go ahead, go ahead. Because see, one of the things that you have to understand, success doesn't care who gets it. Money doesn't care who earns it. There's a certain system and process on how you can earn money and how you can build something in life. And Louis Farrakhan, he's done these things. Bill Cosby, he's done those things. Byron Allen, he's done these things. Robert F. Smith, he's done these things. Once again, there's a blueprint in avoiding practicing black culture like D.L. Hughley. He is bathed up in black culture. He's about that life. He's got the tats and stuff. And you know, Dion Cole. And if you look at all of these comedians who have practiced black culture, they only, they make money, but they, they, they kind of hit a ceiling. They kind of hit a ceiling. It's, it's, it's funny. Like, well, Kevin Hart, I don't even know. I think Kevin Hart's worth like 500, bit, $500 million. And once again, right now, I want you to list all of the racist policies, government legislation that in 2020 that are preventing you to be successful. I want you to list them. Go ahead, list them. And also, let's talk about police brutality. I'm about to get it. I'm on the roll. Most black folks who are stopped by the police, like 99.99% live. These be facts. I mean, you know, it, 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 it seems like every time a black person gets caught by the cops, they are killed. And speaking of that, here in Atlanta, during the 4th of July weekend, we had 31 people shot. There was a little girl who was riding with her mother on Universal Avenue next, close to the Wendy's, where Rayshard Brooks was shot by the cops. 
She was riding with her mother and there was a gunfight that broke out and the bullet penetrated the car and killed this little girl. Guess the race of all the people who were shot. I went ahead and checked. All the people who were shot were black. 31 people shot on the holiday weekend. They were all black. I want you to think about that. 31 people. And where did they get shot? They got shot in the hood. Yep, they got shot in the hood. Practicing black culture. Beefs between drug dealers. Shooting at each other. Resolving conflict with firearms. This, like, like I said, this poor little girl, eight-year-old girl who was at the wrong place at the wrong time, lost her life because she was just riding in the car with her mother. I've talked about this many, many times. I have talked about this while living in the hood. You know, here, warning, he's about to talk bad about black people again. Living in the hood is bad because you could become a statistic by just being in the proximity to the hood. And this was proven by the killing of this little girl. Murder. She was murdered by some clowns who were having a gunfight, more likely over drugs, and she lost her life because she was in the hood. She was in the hood, man. Wasn't doing nothing wrong, wasn't smoking no bud. She was just riding in the car with her mother and she's gone. But y'all keep fighting with me like, oh, the hood's a wonderful place. Hood's the best place. I don't think so. I think nothing but bad things happen. And also, most of these shootings occurred after 12 p.m. It's funny because there was uh, one that happened at like 3.30 and one that happened at 7. But the majority of these shootings happened after midnight. People out practicing black culture. People out living their life. People out having fun. One person, well, two people got shot because some people set some fireworks off in front of their house and they didn't like it. And they went out to investigate and they got shot. Not by the fireworks, but by guns. Black folks shot because they didn't want someone shooting off fireworks in front of their house. Man, that is crazy. That's black culture. You don't talk to me. If I want to shoot these fireworks off in front of your house, I'm going to do so, man. If you don't like it, tell me how is that positive and productive? First of all, black folks used to be very conservative. The poorest black folks, their clothes were clean. Their houses were neat and orderly. Their yours were neat and orderly. And we have lost that because now if you're going to practice black culture and be poor, you don't live in any kind of condition. It's going to look like something like an episode of hoarders. But once again, y'all can come for me. But y'all coming for Louis Farrakhan, who ain't practicing black culture. Y'all coming for him. I don't think so. You can't touch him. He's like MC Hammer. You can't touch him. But. Once again, it's 2020, you're the murder hornet, you're the Rona. What are you doing to progressively move? Yes, there were people who were held back in the past, 100% true. But that stopped. And what is your excuse today for the lack of success? Please give me a valid excuse, not a complaint, not that, you know, it's the, the white man keeping me down. The white man got his foot on my neck. You're 2020. You're the murder hornet. You know, a lot of people, lost, white people lost their jobs. A lot of white people are about to lose the $600 per week economic boost on unemployment. A lot of white people are about to get evicted. A lot of white people are about to get foreclosed on. See? Right now, in this global reset, 
it doesn't care what color you are. It cares if you are an owner, creator, or producer. And if you're not one of those, it's, it could be rough for you. It could be rough for you. I've been saying it for the last 10 years on this channel, color does not matter. And a lot of y'all just don't want to bl drink the Kool-Aid. Y'all like, nah, 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 I don't want, nah, I, don't, I ain't going to drink that. I ain't going to drink that. Nah, nah, I ain't drinking that. But go ahead, investigate Louis Farrakhan. Go ahead, see if the things I said are true. Respectability, hard work, entrepreneurship. Same things I've been saying. But I'm speaking bad to black folks. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. So be sure to go below and get the free course that will help you start a business. The Hustler's Mindset. The link is below. It's free. Go ahead and get that. Go ahead. And for those of you who are looking for the business content, be sure to go to Savage Finance, the other YouTube channel. And that's where the LLC stuff, how to start businesses, service business, all of the stuff, it's going to be over there. That's where it's going. It's not going to be here because I'm gonna give y'all drama. I'm gonna give you more hot, saucy topics like this. I'll be talking about a lot of crazy stuff. I got some ideals and some things that are gonna come because how to start a business content just doesn't do well on this channel. Just doesn't. But black folks don't have no money. Louis Caracon, black wealth and power, I'll do well. I'll do real well over here because I know what y'all like and all of the folks, my folks who like the business content, y'all are running over the Savage Finance. I, I mean, you know, Savage Finance got 50,000 views last month. This channel got 200,000 views. This channel has 95,000 subscribers. Savage Finance has 4,700. It's telling me because Part of it, and I got to take responsibility, part of it is, is how I built this channel, and that's on me. I, I built this channel incorrectly. Too many topics, too many things, and this is how it has created this disconnect. But I understand what y'all like, and I'm about to give you what you like. Going to be having all types of stimulating over economic overview because we're going to get into the nuts and bolts and stuff at Savage Finance. That's where we're going to get into that. So that's all I got for you. Go below, get those courses and watch this next video.